succeed. And that is why we are here today. That is why we have reached this debacle. That is why we are in this fiasco. Madam Speaker, now the Honorable Member for St. John's Rural West, the Prime Minister, he's taking the nation down this magic carpet ride of real independence at the same time that he's telling the people he expects to get a new generator from the Chinese for free. Madam Speaker, nothing is free. I do not know the details of the Chinese arrangement. We need to know it. Your ministers have not seen the agreement. They too need to be enlightened. But one thing I know, Madam Speaker, that handouts begs dependency. Madam Speaker, recognizing that he has been a lousy failure, the Honorable Prime Minister is really in effect seeking to dodge the responsibility by claiming to this country and the citizenry that he's under attack. Imagine the Prime Minister and the powerful government is under attack from the forces of Massa and must therefore seek cover under the cloak of nationalism. Wrap yourself in the flag and preach racial hatred and divide the country further. Madam Speaker, in a bold-faced admission that he's playing naked partisan politics, the Prime Minister told us this morning that his tyrannical assault against Aziz Adid, APC, and the ALP has cut across party lines. Cut across party lines. But what is clearly cut across party lines, Madam Speaker, is the misery, the misery that people from all political persuasions, whether you're UPP, you're ALP, you're yellow, you're black, you're white, you're Chinese, you're Arab, those people are suffering out there in the dark. And why are they suffering out there in the dark? Because a result of your incompetence and your government's incompetence and the caring attitude of you, your Attorney General, the member for St. John's Rural North, Madam Speaker, and David Shaul, who never ever had the interests of this country at heart. You ever hear David Shaul conclude anything, Tantiga? <laughs> you have ever heard one cricket team, one football team, one steel ban? What has he contributed to the people of this country? For all the money he has made, what has he ever given back? Yes, had he make millions. They sponsor Halsey and Steelban, your Steelban. They sponsor football teams. They sponsor all kind of things. They give the dialysis machine. Look at all what Morris Michael have done for carnival, for culture, for cricket. From the Antigua Cricket Association going back to the 60s. And you know, history should be told one day. Because both you and the previous Labour Party administration is guilty. Guilty of putting up the late Ferdy Shaul as some national icon in this country that created and started Carnival. And it's not true. He was the first chairman of Carnival with Ivan McGuinney and others. But it was the late Morris J. Michael who built the same carnival bowl that you criticized the Labour Party administration for buying, who started and pioneered carnival, was the founder of Hell's Gate and brute force. But that will have nothing to do with here. So, Madam Speaker, but the truth should be told. The truth. And you all are lionizing somebody that is not true. Yes, he served. He uh, served with distinction. Honorable Member. Let's get back to this discussion I speaker, and, and leave the to dead to rest in peace. Because it's important Please. for us to set the record straight. Madam Speaker, <clears throat> in a desperate attempt to prevent the reality of his failed leadership from cutting across party lines, the Prime Minister resorted in desperation to a strategy that he hopes will translate public anger into unnecessary and nonsensical load shedding 
into votes. But I have news, Madam Speaker. I have news for the Prime Minister. The never mind the exuberance, my dear Prime Minister, of the UPP Choir and Observer, and in the gallery earlier today that was orchestrated, the people, the vast majority of the people of this country, they will see through the smoke and mirrors of this attempt to set aside the pain of merciless taxation, high food prices, unbearable utility bills forced on them by an uncaring UPP government. Honorable Member, you're reading? No, Madam Speaker, I'm referring to my notes. That's, that's a lot Madam of, Speaker. That's a lot of notes. Speaker. Because you know you're supposed to be debating and not reading. I'm not at all, Madam Speaker, but my notes here. But Madam Speaker, I'm not. Earlier today, Madam Speaker. Pardon me? You know I'm the best. Yes. Madam Speaker, <laughs> earlier today, the Honorable Member for St. John's Rural West, Madam Speaker, he said, Madam Speaker, that this is a national historical day. But whilst the member for St. John's Rural West was speaking in this August house, the workers of cable and wires were locked out. Because the whole computer system, power outage, they had to sit outside and go back home. So cable and wireless could not function today. Did you know that, Mr. Prime Minister? Did you know, Mr. Honorable Member for St. John's Rural West, that Western Union, MoneyGram, restaurants, stores, and certain computer systems in banks came to a halt? while you're on your feet this morning? Madam Speaker, it is the Prime Minister that's a plunge, not as he's had it an APC. It is the Prime Minister and his sidekick, ambassador, advisor, chief negotiator, David Shawl, that has plunged this country into the state of darkness that we are today. And Madam Speaker, that lesson well learned needs to travel across party lines. Because when I made my public concerns about the Hadid group and the Hadid's relationship with the government in 2006, I was scoffed at. I was scorned, Madam Speaker. The Prime Minister huffed. He puffed. He almost blew down the house, Madam Speaker, with his anger, his anger over the fact that I dared, Madam Speaker, to suggest that he, the Prime Minister of this country, was not governing in the public interest, that he was breaching his fiduciary duty and responsibility to the people of this country. But you see, my dear people out there, today the Prime Minister is seeking to wrap himself in the national flag to shed crocodile tears and take advantage, take advantage of the emotions of people. Of course the people are upset over the inconvenience that is being caused and you are seeking, Mr. Prime Minister, to set them up in uproar against the same family who not too long ago you felt, you Mr. Prime Minister felt, that that family was beyond criticism and public scrutiny. And the Prime Minister is seeking to evoke racial, racial hatred. Madam Speaker, irresponsible behavior, not becoming of a Prime Minister. You can't wear your emotions on your sleeves, my dear Prime Minister. I didn't tell you to go and love Alan Stanford. I'm not telling you to go and love as a Jadid, but I'm saying to you, you occupy the highest seat, the highest office in this country, and you have to discharge that duty without fear or favor. And what you sought to do on national television and radio, that is obnoxious. That is haughty. That is arrogant behavior. That, Madam Speaker, is despicable. It is shameful.